Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jatsur Militanena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Archana, I want to share the screen. Okay, Maharaj. I will allow it. Okay, Gurmaj, you can do it now. Okay. All right, so we're reading, we're going through the introduction of the Sri Ishopanishad and we heard how there were four defects. And then we, we heard Srila Prabhupada say that we are not Hindu. Recording in progress. He said we are Varnashrama. We follow the principles of Varna and Ashram. So Prabhupada said, these divisions are everywhere because they are created by God. The divisions of society are Brahman, Shatri, Vaishya, Sudra. So this is describing Varna. There are four different Varnas. One is the Brahman Varna, one is Kshatriya Varna, one is Vaishya Varna and one is Sudra Varna. Guru Maharaj, you, your screen share is not very clear, Guru Maharaj. Really? Yes. We can only see half of the slide. Uh, that's what happening to me, I think. You, you, can, oh, yeah. Same. you can only see half of what? Half the, the book? Half of the screen. I don't know why. Let me see. Mm, would you like to uh, stop sharing and then share it again? Yes, sharing again, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Let me try again. Mm -hmm. Let's see.
Okay. Okay, Guru. This is okay. All right. So the Brahmana refers to the very intelligent class of men, those who know what is Brahman. All right. Brahman means spirit, just like there is there are two kinds of energy. One is matter, material, and one is spiritual, or we call it Brahman. So people who are the Brahmana, they know what is Brahman. Then similarly, the Kshatriyas, the administrator group, are the next intelligent class of men. So the Brahmanas, they are the most intelligent, right? They, they study the scriptures, so they have a lot of knowledge usually. But the Kshatriya, they're the manager, they're the people who are in charge and they tell people what to do. So Krishna's father Vasudev, he was a Kshatriya. So they're, they're also, they're people like kings, big men, you know, they have a lot of responsibility and they they manage, they look after the affairs. Then the Vaishyas, the mercantile group. So Nanda Maharaj, he was a Vaishya. The Vaishyas mean they take care of the cows and they do farming and they do also business. So Prabhupada writes, these natural classifications are found everywhere. This is the Vedic principle and we accept it. Vedic principles are accepted as axiomatic truth. For these truths cannot be at the... For... For there... For there cannot be any mistake. That is, that is acceptance. For instance, in India, cow dung is accepted as pure, and yet cow dung is the stool of an animal. In one place, you'll find the Vedic injunction that if you touch stool, you have to take a bath immediately. But in another place it is said that the stool of a cow is pure. If you smear cow dung in an impure place, that place becomes pure. Okay? Okay. 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 Okay.
พบได้ทุกหนทุกแห่งนี่คือหลักธรรมพระเวทและเราก็ยอมรับหลักธรรมพระเวทเป็นสิ่งที่ยอมรับในฐานะเป็นความจริงที่เห็นได้ง่ายเพราะจะไม่มีข้อผิดพลาดเช่นนี้จึงเป็นที่ยอมรับตัวอย่างเช่นในประเทศอินเดียมูลของวัวยอมรับกันว่าบริสุทธิ์และมูลของวัวก็คืออุจจาระสัตว์ในที่หนึ่งเราจะพบคำสอนพระเวทว่าหากโดนอุจจาระเราจะต้องอาบน้ำทันทีแต่ในอีกที่หนึ่งกล่าวว่าอุจจาระของวัวบริสุทธิ์หากคุณละเลงมูลวัวในสถานที่ที่ไม่บริสุทธิ์แล้วตรงนี้จะกลายเป็นสถานที่ที่บริสุทธิ์ด้วยประสาทสัมผัสธรรมดาเราอาจเถียงว่าเช่นนี้มันขัดกันอันที่จริงมันขัดจากมุมมองของคนธรรมดาแต่ว่าไม่ผิดเพราะมันเป็นความจริงที่กัลกัตาแต่มันเป็นความจริง Alright Okay So Prabhupada is explaining to us about this Vedic principle What is a Vedic principle? สรพพานทรงอธิบายสอนเราอยู่ว่าหลักปรัชญาของพระเวทเนี่ยมันคืออะไร He said, "Vedic principles are accepted as axiomatic truth. Means there cannot be any mistake." หลักธรรมพระเวทเนี่ยเป็นที่ยอมรับในฐานะที่เป็นความจริงที่เห็นได้โดยง่ายนั่นก็คือหมายความว่ามันไม่มีข้อผิดพลาด So then, Prabhupada gives an example of a Vedic principle. และเสวานก็ส่งให้ตัวอย่างจากหลักธรรมพระเวท And it Prabhupada talks about how cow dung is pure. แต่ท่านก็ให้ตัวอย่างของมูลวัวเนี่ยว่ามันบริสุทธิ์อย่างไร But at the same time, we know that cow dung is the stool from the cow. So generally, we think stool is not pure; that is very contaminated. แต่พอพูดถึงมูลวัวเนี่ยเราก็จะรู้กันอยู่แล้วว่ามันเป็นขี้มันเป็นอุจจาระของสัตว์นะมันเป็นอุจจาระของสัตว์ซึ่งอุจจาระเนี่ยมันก็จะมันก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่บริสุทธิ์ We train devotees We train the devotees that if you have to go to the toilet and pass stool then you should take a bath เราจะสอนเหล่าสาวกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราถ้าเกิดว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่ถ่ายอุจจาระเนี่ยนั่นหมายความว่าเขาเนี่ยควรที่จะอาบน้ำเพื่อ But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. But here we're learning that the cow dung is pure. แล้วก็ได้กล่าวไว้ด้วยว่าถ้านำเอามูลวัวนี้เนี่ยไปไปใช้ในที่ที่ที่เป็นที่ที่ไม่บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยมันก็จะสามารถทำให้ที่นั้นเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นได้ just just like in the villages in India they will get the cow dung and they will smear they will smear it all over the ground because it keeps the dust down and makes a nice layer over the dust it stops the dust from flying around And it also stops all the mosquitoes. When in Bangkok, we always have so many mosquitoes there. So, if you put, if we were to put cow dung around everywhere and burn the cow dung, it would stop all the mosquitoes. It would go away. And if you have an infection on the skin. You can put cow dung on it, and it will help to heal it. Now, 
One time, there were two devotees, and they both got stung by bees. So one devotee who got stung, he said, I'm going to go to the doctor. And he got in the car and he drove all the way far away to go to the doctor and the doctor gave him injection and but it took days for him to get over the infection of the sting bite. But the other devotee, he just got cow dung and he put cow dung where he'd been bitten and he got healed very quickly. So cow dung is antiseptic. It's 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 an antiseptic. It's like anti, just like you get ointment, antiseptic ointments. Cow dung is natural antiseptic. <laughs> Mm. All right, so we'll read some more. So Prabhupada says, With our ordinary sense we can argue. This is contradictory. Actually, it is contradictory from the ordinary point of view, but it is not false. It is fact. In Calcutta, a very prominent scientist and doctor analyzed cow dung and found that it contains all antiseptic properties. So cow dung is purifying. When we have a new temple, and before moving into the new temple, what we should do is take cow dung and smear it all over the floors and everywhere on the walls as well, because it will purify everything. People don't know the value of cow dung. They think, oh, this is dirty, but actually it's, not, it's very pure. But we should be careful. Some people may say, oh, if the stool of the cow is pure, the stool of the brahmana must be more pure. Would you agree with that? The stool of the brahmana is more pure than the stool of the cow. What do you say, Shaya? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, I a little bit don't believe that because um, Bhamana is also human and human is all human are living entity and then um i mean we are can falling something like that i don't know is good answer or not <laughs> so cow is also living entity 
Yes, but cow is, um, I mean, because komata is uh, also like, uh, like our mother. Mm -hmm. And in Vedic mention about um, komata, um, I mean, everything is from komata is so purified, Guru Maharaj. So, what about my own mother? Is my own mother still pure? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ah! I, 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 I know my my answer is so conflict, but um, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> no, we cannot uh, accept that is speculation. Okay. We have to understand what the Vedas say. The Vedas say the stool of the cow is pure. It doesn't say the, the stool of every mother is pure. It just says the stool of the cow is pure. And if we, if we try to say, oh, Brahmana is more pure, then that is speculation, not true. Yeah. Okay, so we should not speculate about the Vedic knowledge. Take the Vedic knowledge as it is. Okay, so Prabhupada continues. In India, if one person tells another, you must do this, the other person may say, what do you mean? Is this a Vedic injunction that I have to follow you without any argument? Vedic injunctions cannot be interpreted, but ultimately, if you carefully study why these injunctions are there, you will find that they are all correct. นี่เป็นคำสอนพระเวทหรือเปล่าที่ฉันจะต้องทำโดยที่ไม่มีการคัดค้านคำสอนพระเวทไม่มีการตีความแต่ในที่สุดหากเราศึกษาอย่างรอ
it is not possible to experiment to find out whether he is your father. Okay? ความรู้พระเวทมาจากโลกทิพย์มาจากองค์กฤษณะอีกชื่อหนึ่งของพระเวทคือสรุจิสรุจิหมายถึงความรู้ที่ได้มาจากการสลับฟังไม่ใช่
if you want to know something beyond your experience, beyond your experimental knowledge, beyond the activities of the senses, then you have to accept the Vedas. There is no question of experimenting. It has already been experimented. It is already settled. The version of the mother, for instance, has to be accepted as truth. There is no other way. Just like if your mother says, this man is your father, you cannot tell your mother, no, he's not my father, I don't believe it, I don't believe you're wrong. You have to accept what your mother says. The, the same way, we have to accept what the Vedas say. We cannot say, no, Vedas wrong, Vedas not. We have to accept everything the Vedas say. So the Vedas are considered to be the mother and Brahma is called the grandfather, the forefather, because he was the first to be instructed in the Vedic knowledge. In the beginning, the first living creature was Brahma. He received this Vedic knowledge and imparted it to Narada and other disciples and sons. And they also distributed it to their disciples. In this way, the Vedic knowledge comes down by disciplic succession. So Brahma was the first person to take birth in the material world. He was born from the lotus flower. And that lotus flower came from the navel of Vishnu. So Brahma got the Vedic knowledge put into his heart from Vishnu. Then Brahma he had he began to produce people from him. He produced different sons, like Narada was one of his sons, and he gave Narada the same knowledge, the Vedic knowledge. <laughs> You have to understand, Brahma didn't need a wife to have children. He 
He could have sons, he produced sons simply from his own mind. And then they, Narada was one of his sons and Narada had disciples and he gave the knowledge to his disciples. So that is the disciplic succession. So Prabhupada writes, in the, he said, it is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that Vedic knowledge is understood in this way. If you make experiment, if you make experimental endeavor, you come to the same conclusion. But just to save time, you should accept. If you want to know who your father is, and if you accept your mother as the authority, then whatever she says can be accepted without argument. There are three kinds of evidence, pratyaksha, anumana, and shapta. Pratyaksha means direct evidence. Direct evidence is not very good because our senses are not perfect. We are seeing the sun daily and it appears to us just like a small disc, but it is actually far, far larger than many planets. So of what value is this seeing? Therefore we have to read books, then we can understand about the sun. So direct experience is not perfect. We, we heard in the last class, our senses are imperfect. We make mistakes. Sometimes we're in illusion. Sometimes we cheat. So all of these things happen because our senses are not perfect. So they're saying direct evidence is not perfect. We cannot just go by what we see. We may see something, we see, oh, this person looks very nice. And he, they may look very nice, but actually when we know them, we'll see they're not very nice, they may be very nasty. Mm -hmm. 
ดูน่าจะดีมากแต่ว่าเวลารู้จักเขาจริงๆเนี่ยโหปากเราเป็นคนที่ไม่ได้ดีเลย But the same, the other is true that somebody may not look very nice, but they may be very nice. So we cannot just go by what we see with our eyes. And we cannot just depend on what we hear. Mm, our senses perceive things. We understand things in different ways. So we don't get knowledge by just using our senses. So then, Prabhupada explains. Then there is anumana. Meaning inductive knowledge, it may be like this hypothesis. For instance, Darwin's theory says it may be like this, it may be like that, but that is not science. That is a suggestion, and it is also not perfect. จากนั้นเราก็มีความรู้ด้วยจากการพิสูจน์ใช้เหตุผลมันอาจจะเป็นอย่างนี้ซึ่งเป็นทฤษฎีอย่างเดียวซึ่งเป็นทฤษฎีตัวอย่างเช่นทฤษฎีของดาวินกล่าวว่ามันอาจจะเหมือนอย่างนี้มันอาจจะเหมือนอย่างนั้นแต่นั่นไม่ใช่วิทยาศาสตร์มันเป็นข้อชวนคิดแล้วก็ไม่สมบูรณ์เช่นกัน So do you know this name Darwin? He's very famous. He's an Englishman, and he had the, the he came up with the theory of evolution. And he said that. The people with all the humans, we have come from the monkeys, and the monkeys they came from a lower species, and like that, a, he said, there's an evolution of life from the lower species to the higher species. So we don't accept that. And, and he cannot prove it. He gave, he gave a theory, but he could, he did not give proof of the theory. So we want to get real knowledge. Real knowledge doesn't come just by your mind by thinking. ความรู้ที่แท้จริงเนี่ยเราจะไม่ได้ได้มาจากจิตใจของเราหรือว่าแค่จากการคิดของเราเอง So Prabhupada said, if you receive the knowledge from the authoritative source, that is perfect. If you receive a program guide from the radio station authorities, you accept it. You don't deny it. You don't have to make an experiment because it is received from the authoritative sources. So, 
โดยไม่ปฏิเสธไม่ต้องพิสูจน์เพราะได้รับมาจากแหล่งที่เชื่อถือได้ Just like in Thailand you want to know what's going on in the country you get the news from the newspapers you read in the newspaper what's happening เหมือนกับการที่เราเนี่ยอยู่ประเทศไทยเวลาเราอยากรู้ว่าสถานการณ์บ้านเมืองเป็นอย่างไรบ้างเนี่ยเราก็จะได้รับข่าวสารเหล่านี้จากการอ่านหนังสือพิมพ์ and they have also the Royal Gazette which gives all the information all the new laws แล้วเราก็ยังมีราชกิจจานุเบกษาที่เราจะสามารถหาข้อมูลได้ So you want to know everything about what's happening in Thailand? You read these things, you get the authorized news. It comes from the it comes from the authority. It's born. It's it's correct. But if I just say something from my mind, well, I think it's like this. I think like that. If I just say it from myself, or if I just ask anybody in the street, it may not be right. So Vedic knowledge is called Shabda Pramana. Another name is Shruti. Shruti means that this knowledge. Has to be received simply by oral reception. Shruti means that the knowledge has to be received by oral reception. The Vedas instruct that in order to understand transcendental knowledge, we have to hear from the authority. Pravet s a i w a เพื่อเข้าใจความรู้ทิพย์เราต้องฟังจากผู้ที่เชื่อถือได้ Transcendental knowledge is knowledge from beyond this universe ความรู้ทิพย์เป็นความรู้ที่มาจากเนือจักรวาลนี้ Within this universe is material knowledge and beyond this universe is transcendental knowledge ภายในจักรวาลนี้เป็นความรู้วัตถุ We cannot even go to the end of the universe. So how can we go to the spiritual world? Thus, we have to acquire. Thus, to acquire full knowledge is impossible. We cannot even go to the end of the universe. So how can we go to the spiritual world? Thus, to acquire full knowledge is impossible. So there is material knowledge and there is transcendental knowledge. So material knowledge is temporary. It's not always true. But transcendental knowledge is eternal knowledge, always true. So, material knowledge is from this world, and transcendental knowledge comes from the spiritual world. ความรู้วัตถุเนี่ยเป็นความรู้จากโลกนี้มีเครื่องจากโลกนี้แต่ว่าความรู้ทิพย์เนี่ยเป็นความรู้ที่มาจากโลกทิพย์ But we cannot go to the spiritual world yet แต่ว่าเราเนี่ยไม่สามารถไปที่โลกทิพย์ได้ So we have to understand how to get spiritual knowledge 
่แต่ในเราจะก็จะถามกันว่าแล้วเราจะได้รับความรู้ทิมได้อย่างไรโอเค maybe we'll stop here tonight is there any question โอเคเราจะหยุดทำบรรยายไว้เพียงแค่นี้ก่อนนะคะเผื่อใครจะมีคำถามอะไรจะเปิดโอกาสให้ถาม yes g o o d m a h a j first question from s a r a k u n i m a h a r i s n a g u r u m a r a j big b a s i c m a h a m b o l s s อาจารย์จะถามว่า Vedic knowledge ใช่ไหมคะส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นสิ่งที่เชื่อถือได้ใช่ไหมคะแล้วก็อยากจะถามว่าแล้วก็สูติเนี่ยเหมือนกับมารดาของเราจะสามารถองบอกถึงพระบิดาก็คือพระเจ้าใช่ไหมแล้วแล้วตรงเนี้ยพวกที่เชื่อในสูติส่วนใหญ่ก็จะเป็นเวดังตีใช่ไหมคะเราพวกเวดังตีเนี่ยเขาจะชอบคิดว่าส่วนเอ่อพวกเขาอ่ะส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นไมล์ตีแล้วอันนี้ตามความจริงพระเวทเนี่ยมาจากองค์พระวางใช่ไหมแล้วแล้วมันเป็นอย่างนี้ได้ยังไงวะพวกเวทันติส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นเป็นมาอวันดีแต่เขาไม่รู้พระเจ้าจริงๆใช่แล้วถ้าที่พวกเขาอะคิดติดกับสุนติมากเขาจะไม่รับไม่รับความรู้จักสุนติเลยเขาจะแบบยืนหยัดอยู่กับแต่สุนติแล้วบอกว่าพระเจ้ามันจะไม่มีรูปหลักส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นแบบนั้นเอาทำไม Okay, g u r m a h Her question is regarding the Vedic knowledge. We call it s r u t i and uh, we, as we know, the Ved Vedanti, they are very uh, much into s r u t i knowledge. But even though they are so much with the s r u t i knowledge, they are still uh, most of them are Maya v a d i s So why don't the Vedas? Uh, uh, is that Vedas also? Not really telling us who the real supreme lord is, or why are they confused? Yes, you you see, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "Trigunya Vishaya Veda, nice Trigunya Bhavarjuna." Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that the Vedas deal with the subject matter of the three modes of material nature. Rise above the modes of nature and be transcendental to all. เหมือนกับที่กฤษณาได้ตรัสไว้ในพระกฤติตาว่าความรู้พระเวทเนี่ยก็จะเป็นความรู้พระเวทที่ยังอยู่ภายใต้พลังงานสามพลังงานวัตถุอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นอรจุณาเจ้าจงออกมาเหนือพลังงานวัตถุทั้งสามอันนี้แล้วก็มาอยู่ในมาสถิตอยู่ในระดับคิดอันนี้คือเป็นสิ่งที่กฤษณาจะบอกกับองค์อรจุนะ Then in the Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma, there's a prayer from Lord Brahma. He says, Advaita Machuta Manadi Mananta Rupam Adyam Purana Purusham Yavano Vanamcha Vede Shudurlaba Madurlaba Matma Bato Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajamin So Lord Brahma is praying that third line, Vede Shu Durlabam, Adurlabam Atma Bhakto. Is it very difficult to know Krishna or Govinda from the Vedas, but very easy to know him from the devotee? มีจากสโลกจากบรมันสมิตานะคะเป็นบทมนที่พระพรมเนี่ยทรงตรัสไว้ประมาณสโลกที่สามจะบอกไว้ว่ามันเป็นสิ่งที่ยากมากสำหรับมนุษย์เนี่ยที่จะรู้ถึงพระองค์โดยการศึกษาจากพระเวทแต่มันจะเป็นการง่ายสําหรับเขาที่จะรู้ถึงพระองค์โดยจากการที่เขาเนี่ยเรียนรู้จากเสาของพระองค์ So the Vedas they they don't speak so much about bhakti because bhakti not everybody will take up bhakti People are very interested in their material development. They want economic development. They want sense gratification. จังพระเวทเนี่ยจะไม่ได้บรรยายหรือว่าบอกในส่วนของการปฏิบัติการวิตนเสียสารับใช้ไวมากนักเพราะว่าสิ่งที่มนุษย์ต้องการเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่เนี่ยเขาจะมีความสนใจกับการพัฒนาทางเศรษฐกิจหรือว่าความต้องการในการสร้างประสาทสัมพัทธ์ของเขาต่างๆในโลกวัตถุ
So the Vedas will teach more about material things, about how to take care of the children and to do the samskars and how to get married and how to die, what you do when somebody dies and when somebody's born, these different rituals. So the Vedas doesn't speak much, very little about bhakti. So very difficult for people to understand that the goal of the Vedas is bhakti. Because most people are materialistic, they're not much interested to know about getting liberation. They just want sense gratification. Let me earn money, economic development, make money, and let me enjoy material life. So, from the Vedas, there are four goals actually, four goals of life Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So people in the beginning, they'll be religious, they'll do, they'll be pious, they'll worship God, they'll do puja, they'll go to the temple, these things. And their purpose, they're wanting, <laughs> they want economic development. They want to get economic development. And then they want, when they, when they get money, they want sense gratification. They want to enjoy. And then, what they should want, they should be frustrated because they cannot enjoy, because they'll feel disappointed. When they try to enjoy, they'll feel disappointed. Then they should think about liberation. But it never happens. People get so attached to economic development and sense gratification. They never get tired of it and they, they never, very rare that people think about liberation. So, we are trying to educate people about the real goal of the Vedas. But we, we see, and Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also says, out of thousands among men, only one is endeavouring for perfection. And of those who achieve perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So 
So that was why Srila Vyasadeva, he had written many books, but he did not feel satisfied. So then Narada Muni told him, he said, because you have not properly glorified the process of devotional service, therefore you're not happy. Who is this, Anshina? My mother, Guru Maharaj. Oh. <laughs> okay, is that clear now, Sarat Purnima? Yes, yes, yes Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Yes, Guru Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, good. Next question from Shaya Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Okori to Sira Prabhupada. Come to Hamu Pina. Ah, name. อ่าภาวะเนี่ยค่ะเป็นเป็นสิ่งที่ที่เป็นหลักการความเป็นจริงมากที่สุดแต่ว่าในยุคสมัยกาลียุคเนี่ยค่ะคนที่เป็นสา
when Prabhupada wrote his books and published his books, then we took them to different scholars and we got them to write appreciations for Prabhupada's books. And different scholars in India, we went to the Sanskrit professors and everything, we showed them Prabhupada's books and they would read them and they would write commentary and they would appreciate them. So our Krishna consciousness literature is all authorized and it's recognized by scholars around the world. Um, whatever Prabhupada writes, it's coming through the disciplic succession and it's coming from hundreds and thousands of years. In the beginning of the creation, the knowledge was given by Lord Vishnu to Brahma, and then Brahma gave it to Narada, and then Narada he gave it to Vyasa. Vyasa is a disciple of Narada. So you cannot say that our books are not authorized. Just like in Thailand, everybody knows Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita is authorized, it's an authorized scripture. So we are introducing the other Vedic books to people. Other people are not familiar with books like Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, but gradually they're being introduced to them. These books are well known by scholars. So this the Krishna consciousness is not a new religion. It's it's been around for for a long time, for a very long time. We follow Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya came 500 years ago. And then we follow also Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna came 5,000 years ago. And Lord Brahma, he's also a devotee. He also practices Krishna consciousness. And he said from the beginning of the creation of the material world, many millions of years ago. So you cannot, you should not have any doubt about the authority of Krishna consciousness. This, this is the, the oldest philosophy, the oldest teachings. 
เพราะว่ามันเป็นความรู้เดิมแท้ที่มีการสอนกันมาที่เก่าแก่มากที่สุด And the scholars, they all recognize that that it, this is a, a very ancient tradition. And at one, at one point in in a, in America, they tried to stop Hare Krishna movement, and they said this is not authorized. This is just A cult, and this is brainwashing people, and it's not good for people. And so then they went to court, and then the judge said, the very first day, in the very first day of the trial, the judge said, "Krishna consciousness is an authorized religion. We cannot; it, it has to be allowed." He said because the the law, just like in Thailand, the same law as in Thailand is in America that they have freedom of religion. And this is authorized religion. ในประเทศอเมริกาเนี่ยตอนแรกก็มีปัญหากันอย่างมากตอนที่เริ่มมีการเผยแพร่ขบวนการประชาธิปไตยอย่างใหญ่ก็มีคนแบบฟ้องร
ครใครที่ไปโรงเรียนหรือไปเรียนไปศึกษาเนี่ยคือเขาจะเราจะต้องศึกษาทฤษฎีนี้แล้วก็ปฏิบัติตามก็คือบุคคลโดยโดยทั่วไปเนี่ยเขาก็เป็นเป็นที่ยอมรับของพวกเขาแล้วก็ดังมากทึหลักทฤษฎีนี้ so actually Darwin it Shri Prabhupada said that this Darwin was uh, hired by the British government to come up with an atheistic theory about the origin of life. Because the British wanted to use Darwin's theory to get rid of Hinduism, to get rid of uh, all the the very culture which was there in India, he wanted the Indian people to give up the worship of the deities, and he wanted them to accept Darwin's theory. The British wanted them to accept Darwin theory. <laughs> But as I said, Darwin is a it's a theory, and there's no evidence to support the theory. It's never been proven. But the propaganda has been so heavy that all over the world, even in Christian schools, even in schools where they're supposed to be Christians, they teach Darwin theory that life has evolved from the lower species. So uh, we don't agree that life evolved from the lower species. We say life came from the higher species. It came from Lord Brahma. He's the first living entity. And then the life evolved down from Brahma down into other species. เราบอกว่าเอ่อเราเนี่ยจะไม่ยอมรับคริสตินี้เด็ดขาดเพราะเราไม่เชื่อแบบนั้นเราเชื่อว่ามนุษย์เนี่ยคือเรามาจากสิ
เราเราไม่เชื่อกับกับการไปเนี่ยข้างในของ And when Prabhupada saw what was supposed to be the moon, Prabhupada said that cannot be the moon. The moon is not like that. He said the moon's a heavenly planet. There's a lot of life, a lot of vegetation on the moon, but they showed the moon to be like a desert. So, how to get people to accept it? Well, we have to teach more the Vedic knowledge. We have to preach. We have to explain Vedic philosophy to them. But the, it's so difficult because there's so much cover up. There's so much cheating goes on in the name of science that people don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know what is the truth. Okay, so <laughs> I, I have to stop here and Kavi Chandraswam is trying to contact me. Yes, yes. So, okay. so we'll, okay. fini we'll finish here today and we'll be back on Monday. So yes. thank you very much for translation, Archana. Thank you. Thank all the devotees for listening and have a good weekend and we'll see you next week. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yay. Good.